back to another episode of Quarantined Coaches. I am in Raleigh tonight uh, with NC State with Coach Clint Chrysler. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great, man. I appreciate you having me on. Oh, man, there's nobody better than you, man. I'm excited I got <laughs> you to do this. Um, pretty debatable, I'm sure. If you if you if you pull the pull the group, it's probably a pretty debatable statement. But yeah, uh, okay. So you were the recruiting coordinator at Winthrop, and you then here came to North Carolina State as the pitching coach. How different does recruiting look from a very good mid major that you're at to the ACC? I mean, how different are the players you're going after, or the the scale of it? Like, what's different? Well, it's it's different in a lot of ways. Obviously, you know, we're we're very fortunate at North Carolina State that that we play in a very good league and. And Coach Hart and Coach Avon and and the pitching coaches that have come before me have have built a program that that has the you know has the national reputation that we have. So there's you know you're gonna you're gonna find kids at North Carolina State that that this is really where they want to go, you know. And and sometimes those kids are are very very high end players. And obviously it puts you in the catbird seat with some of those some of those players that it's you know kind of a you know, they, they grew up wearing, wearing red and white in the state of North Carolina, and it, it puts you in a really good position to get those players. Now, you know, for us, it, it still comes down to, to building relationships. You know, we talk all the time about recruiting based on relationships and uh, getting to know these kids and getting to know their families, uh, you know, because ultimately this is, this is a big interview process. You know, they're interviewing us, we're interviewing them, and everyone's looking for the right fit. You know, everyone talks about that fit, and, but that fit has to be mutual. You know, as, as coaches, you know, we want to come to work and, and you know, be excited about the kids that, that we're coming to work with as well, not only on a, on a physical level. Uh, that's the easy part. You know, a lot of times the physical evaluation is the easy part, but the evaluation of the makeup and, and, and that part of, of learning who these kids are, who these families are, is, is sometimes the most difficult. Well, I would imagine that in some senses it's easier because of the brand, but then in other senses, like now you're having to recruit kids earlier, right? Like, I mean, you guys are. Well, you, you, you are recruiting them earlier, but I, I, you know, that, that's obviously a challenge. Um, you know, the other challenges you run into now is, is a, the schools you're recruiting against, you know, just, just here in our region, you know, we're recruiting against, you know, a lot of very, very good programs and, you know, and then you're also recruiting against the draft. You know, if you, you know, you happen to, you know, to get one of these higher end uh, kids that continue to develop. And, and now you're also working against, um, you know, professional baseball. And, you know, obviously all these kids want to be big leaguers and they, and we want them all to be big leaguers. And then it's a matter of, of finding that kid that's, that's, talented enough and will work hard enough to be an impact player in the ACC. But at the same time, is not that guy that's ready to be a first or second round draft picked out of high school, you know? So that's, that's kind of where the balancing act comes into play with the, you know, with, with the recruiting. So if you had to break down kind of the recruiting seasons from whether it's identification to evaluation offers like on a calendar, which season is which? Well, you know, obviously I, th I think those are all, that's all part of it, but I think, you know, as, as you're kind of re referring to it as seasons, you know, I would say that starts differently for every player. It kind of starts when the identification starts. You know, sometimes that identification uh, starts with a phone call to a high school coach in, in February in preparation for the March 1 recruiting date. And sometimes that, that comes from, you know, talking to travel ball coaches. Sometimes that, that comes from going to watch one kid and end up identifying another kid. I mean, that happens all the time. So, you know, I, I think the, the seasons differ with, with every scenario. Um, I think you are accurate in saying that there is kind of a process. You know, there's an identification process and there's a, you know, a, a contact or, you know, as, as I've already referenced once before, the, the relationship building side of it. Um, then there's the, the, you know, these kids and their family finding a way to get on your campus, uh, whether that is, you know, them coming and, and just kind of walking around campus on their own or, or you know, coming to a camp or, you know, something like that, that they're able to, you're able to, you know, have have face-to-face -face contact with some of these younger kids. So, and, and then obviously the the offer and the, and the commitment, you know, follows that relationship and, and that, you know, full evaluation period. So, 
So then I, I would be wrong if I were to say like, okay, you know, summer is hardcore evaluation. Um, you know, not many commitments going out over the summer. I mean, you're watching them and, and the, the offers come more in the early fall. Like you're saying that it really doesn't matter what time of year it is. It just matters. No, I, I, w I wouldn't say you'd be wrong. I mean, obviously the summer is, is the time of, of yes, the most evaluations because we as coaches – we, we don't have any other balls in the air at that point. You know, in the fall, we have fall ball. Um, you know, we also have junior college recruiting a lot in the fall. Uh, that's a high priority for most programs in the fall. Um, and then obviously in the spring, we have our team. And, and ultimately, I think, you know, most coaches you talk to will agree that, that recruiting is the, is the lifeblood of what we do. And we got to get the right horses in there. But we also have a huge responsibility to to, to our current players, you know, to coach our players and in player development and, and you know, tr obviously trying to continue to, to get out and evaluate players in the spring, evaluate them in a very competitive, uh, you know, high school setting. Um, you know, so I, no, I wouldn't say you were wrong. I mean, summer is certainly going to be when you, when you are doing the most evaluating. Now, you know, the, the timing on the commitment, whether it's a summer commitment, a fall commitment, a summer offer, a fall off or I think it's based on the player. You know, it, it depends on where these kids are and where they feel like their fit is. And, and, you know, obviously if they're ready to make a decision and, and we're on the same page, then, you know, chances are you, you can get that summertime offer and summertime commitment. Now, if a kid is dead set on waiting through the summer and evaluating where he is from a, from an overall recruiting standpoint, you know, then, then maybe you're going to, you know, then maybe you're going to hold off. And now maybe it is a fall, you know, a fall offer or a fall, commitment so I, th I think it's it's you know it's unique to to each young man and their family but you know it, it can happen at all times for sure so what are you guys uh the recruiting in the fall you mentioned the the juco stuff i don't think many people and in, in, honestly including myself are really familiar with the recruiting that takes place in the fall can you kind of talk a little bit about what's happening on the junior college scene that you guys are locked in on well, I mean, basically, we, you know, we have a short window now in the fall. We basically have a month with the way the recruiting calendar changed uh, last year where we, you know, for round number's sake, we have from September 15th, October 15th. Um, and, you know, for the most part, um, a, a large amount of your, of your junior college recruiting is going to take place in the fall. You know, a lot of programs look to, look to fill holes and look to, you know, look for impact players coming out of the junior college ranks. And, and that there's a, so many big junior college events, whether it's, you know, tournaments that you can go see 20 or 30 teams or, or all-star weekends or different things that it's, it's very uh, efficient, you know, for us to be able to get out and, you know, at least one of your three permissible recruiters being out and, and, you know, evaluating junior college players throughout the fall, because again, you, you only have four weeks of it. Um, you know, and now, you know, with the new calendar, October 15th is, it goes quiet again. So you're, you know, you're limited in that time. And then, you know, it's very difficult to get out away from home in the spring. You know, it's one thing to go see high school games that are within a couple hours. Uh, you can do that on a regular basis on, on off days and that sort of thing. But, you know, being able to get on an airplane and fly to the Midwest or, or fly out to, out to California or to the, to the Northwest is, is very difficult in the spring, you know, because again, you're playing four or five days a week and you're practicing and you have that obligation to your, you know, to your current players to, to continue with, with their development. And, and obviously ultimately our, our number one goal, you know, is to win and to win with our current team. And, and uh, so that's why the junior college aspect is a little bit higher priority in the fall, just because you, you have a little more time um, and it's not the end of the world, you know, to, to be on the road for a few days during, you know, during skill work or something like that. So from a recruiting standpoint, what's going on in the winter time for you guys? What are you doing at that point? Well, it's, I mean, it, it really never stops for us, Josh. It's, it's, you know, it's still building those relationships. It's, it's taking calls from, from all your guys that you're actively recruiting. It's starting to contact um, you know, local high school coaches to get their take on their players. You know, the, the high school coach is still a very, very important part of this thing for us. Um, you know, that guy sees those players every single day. He might have them in class. He sees them in practice every day. And, and it's a little bit different of a, of a thought process for him and evaluation for, for the high school coach than it is a travel coach that, 
you know, Johnny rolls in there on a, on a Friday afternoon and, and plays a game Friday, two Saturday, one Sunday, and they don't see him again until the next week. They don't see that young man's practice habits. They don't see that kid in the weight room. Um, they don't see that kid during conditioning, during fundamental work, um, situational hitting, you know, things that, things that truly help win games. So we, we, try to, we try to really involve high school coaches during the winter. Um, obviously camps, you know, have become a, have become a big recruiting tool now, um, being able to get uh, these younger players on campus in a camp setting, not only to evaluate them from a baseball standpoint, but, um, you know, to, to try and evaluate them personally as well, you know. So um, as far as, you know, everyday office work and that sort of thing for us from a recruiting standpoint in, in the wintertime, there's not a lot, especially during winter break when our players are at home. But, um, you know, the, the recruiting part of it, just, it doesn't stop. It just can't. It's, it's entirely too competitive. Okay, so we have the fall, which is heavy into the JUCO stuff for that month that, that you're able to. Obviously, the high school recruiting never stops. You get to a few tournaments as you can. Yeah, and, and you still have, you know, you still have all the big fall events. You know, you right. have the freshman world championship and the sophomore world championship and the underclass and, and then the Jupiter event, which, you know, the Jupiter event, you know, the last two years has, has coincided with the freshman world series. So you're able to get down to Jupiter and, see a lot of your committed kids, but at the same time, you're able to get over and evaluate the, the, the young, young guys too. Spring rolls around, um, how, you know, you had mentioned, you know, getting to some games as you can on off days. Uh, how, how in touch can you stay with a player's spring season though? Um, I mean, you gotta, you gotta keep pretty good, pretty good tabs on guys because guys are taking these jumps and, and and guys are guys are putting themselves in position to be recruited every day, and whether it's consistent contact with the high school coach, consistent contact with the player, um, you know, or you know, just get getting out and seeing guys, you know, guys that maybe caught your eye, um, you know, six months before in the summer that you haven't got a chance to see again, and and now that guy pops up where he's playing on a Monday, that's an off day for you, and you know, then you're going to get out there. And, you know, then if, if you identify that kid as a, as a recruitable player and a player that, that you want, then, then your, you know, your kind of stages of recruiting that you mentioned at the very beginning, then it starts in the spring with that, you know, with that particular player. So, um, you know, typically Mondays and, and a lot of Thursdays is when you're able to get out. You know, we're playing um, those other days. But, you know, local, you look for local stuff where, you know, you're able to be at practice. And then once practice is over, you're able to shoot, you know, shoot down the road and, and go see a high school game too. Um, so you talk about kind of your your weekly schedule, Mondays, Thursdays, those are those are better days. So when when players try to reach out to coaches and maybe make initial contact, send videos, whatever, um, it, it's hard to get a response sometimes because you guys are really busy. And not that you wouldn't respond, but sometimes it will get lost in your email inbox especially when you're on the road, right? And you come back and there's 700 emails for you. So like, what's like the best time? Uh, I, tell, I tell guys that I work with to send it after a weekend where you want a big series. Wait till like Tuesday or Wednesday when you're in a good mood. But what's it? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that certainly helps. I mean, it's really, it certainly helps when you, you, you come off winning a big series for sure. But it's, all, it's almost more, it's not so much the timing because – I mean, we're not always going to be in a good mood, man, but, but recruiting has to keep going, you know, and, and it's more, I think it's more the format, you know, it's more your initial response when you see the email from that, from that player. And it's not, you know, it's not, Hey coach, it's not sent to 200 people. It's not, you know, um, you know, it doesn't say a different school on there instead of NC state because they've been copy and paste and, you know, a, a player that actually takes the time to formulate a, a real email that has some personal value to it. And, and, you know, and, and the other thing that these, that these players have to remember is, you know, up until September 1st of this year, we're not able to respond to any emails that is not, that is anyone younger than a 2021 grad. So you get all these emails from these 22s, 23s, even at times now, 24s, as crazy as it sounds. And, and there's nothing, there's nothing you can do with it. You know, you just read it, and and that player might be sitting there going, "Man, well, you know, I've emailed Coach Chrysler three times, and and he hasn't responded." And you know, that's well. Like, when is Coach Chrysler's you know? when is Coach Chrysler's email inbox 
as clear as it can get during a week? Is it a Tuesday? Is it a Wednesday? When, when are you, is I mean, it's usually by the end of every day, to be honest with you. Like I have a, I have an issue with, and, and my, my wife will be the first to tell you, I have an issue with, with icons. Like on my phone, if I have you a, and I have talked about this any, before, any the- kind of icon, like it drives me crazy. It needs to be clean. So when I go in my in my email inbox and it needs to be clean, even if it's moving an email from a 23 or 24 into my into my 23 2023 recruiting file or something to where there's not unread messages there. You know, respond to the ones I can respond to, and 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 you know. Just, same it's, way. Typically, it's a, it's a daily it's a daily thing for me. And obviously, sometimes it'll get you know thirty or forty, but rarely do I get into those into those huge numbers. I just I just can't handle it. It it, it drives I me crazy. Take, <laughs> I take screenshots of like text messages or emails that I want to respond to later, just so I can delete the actual email itself, and then I'll go back into my photos and be like, okay, what do I need? Because I can't handle that. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, so- I mean, the, the, the biggest issue with, with the emails in, the, in this day and age is just the understanding on the, on the you know, prospective student athlete side of, of what the rules are and, and who we can respond to and who we can't, you know. There might be a, a 23 or 24 that sends a, sends a great email with, with good video and, and you know, you're, you're having to go through different avenues to let that kid know you got his email, you know, rather than just responding to it. So. So you spend all those months gathering information, following um, players, potential recruits, and then you get close to the summertime. You have so many names. How do you then figure out which ones you're going to lock in on? Because you're not, I mean, I'd imagine you don't have time to see everybody over the summer. No, no. And, and, you know, first, obviously it's, it's based on your specific needs, you know, so if you have, this need in the 22 class, then the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go back to your list of guys that you've personally seen. And then you want to follow back up on, you know, follow back up with those guys. And then, you know, it's, it's all about, you know, who you know and who you can trust in the, in the, in the summer ball world. And, and you get on the phone with, with these coaches and, and, you know, let them know where your needs are and, and then, you know, get names and, you know, try to plug those names into your schedules and, and, you know, again, just try to see as many guys as you can, because ultimately it's uh, you, you obviously can't see everybody, especially in these big events with two and three and 400 teams and spread out all over half half the Southeast, you know, it's, it's very difficult. So it's about identifying your needs first and foremost, and then having, you know, having a network of people that you know, and that you trust that can, that, you know, if, if that guy tells you that a, that this player is, you know, potentially a guy for you that, that you can know that he is. So that, you know, there's, there's a lot of wild goose chases out there, unfortunately. And, and, you know, you have to have a group of, of guys that you, that you truly trust that knows what players in your program look like, knows what, you know, type of players you need to have to, to win at, at your particular level, no matter what level it is. And, and then you can, begin to fill your holes, I guess, uh, in your scheduling based on, you know, those names. So, you know, I'd imagine that you have to gather more names than you need during the year. You just, you you have to, because you won't know, I guess, your needs. You kind of talk about whether it's guys transferring out or drafts, things like that. So there, I mean, it's possible for, and I'm not talking about you in particular, I'm talking about just in the recruiting world in general, from what you know, it's possible that a kid could be talking to a school for months and then it comes summertime it's like actually this is not a need for us is that fair to say um i mean that that could happen not that that's i would say you know it it does happen because because a lot of times you you are in scenarios where you know you need you need one you know left-handed hitter and just like you said you're talking to four five six left-handed hitters because you know there's a bunch of schools in your league, a bunch of schools in the SEC that are, that are talking to the same player. And if you're fortunate enough to get that player, well, then, you know, those other, those other guys aren't a, a top flight need. Now, will you continue to communicate them, continue to evaluate them? Sure, because things change so much. But there, there certainly is that, that scenario that, that can play out. And, you know, there's also the scenario where you, you're talking to five or six of them, you don't get any of them. Right. And then, you know, then you're, 
you're back on that, you're back on that phone and back in that, you know, into your network and, and, you know, running down names. Right. Um, okay. So it's tournament time. Uh, the schedule comes out three hours before 400 teams start to play. <laughs> yeah. You get last minute, you got to put together something. I mean, how, you know, what, what do you do? Do you build some crazy spreadsheet or you just kind of pick the fields that you, you see there's going to be good teams there that day? Um, well, for, for us personally, and the way Coach Hart and I do it, you know, is, uh, and, and I think most people probably kind of follow the same script is, is obviously you have your names and wherever you have your names, you might, you know, some people might just write them on a notebook paper. Some people might have them in a spreadsheet. Some people might have them color coded by class, by position, by whatever. But the, the first thing you do is you get your arms, your priority arms in that schedule. And the reason for that is, you know, sometimes those, if some of those teams don't make the playoffs, some of those arms might just be thrown once during the week. You know, hitters are going to be in that lineup every day. You probably have six or seven opportunities to evaluate a hitter, but you know, that arm, you know, especially if say that it's a Friday first day of the tournament and that arm's thrown on Sunday, there's a pretty good opportunity, pretty good chance that that, that guy's only going to go once. What so, happens when it rains and your whole plan is thrown off? Then what do you do? <laughs> Uh, burn up phone batteries for sure. Um, you know, uh, most of these organizations that put on these big events, I, I got to commend them. They do an unbelievable job of keeping, keeping the schedule updated and they really only move the games that get rained out. Like they don't push everything back. They keep everything on schedule as much as possible. So chances are, you know, if an entire time slot or two gets rained out for you personally, that's, probably four games you know it's two for you and two for your other guy that's there and and you just kind of you know if if Josh Rudd is was supposed to be thrown at two o'clock then all I'm going to do is is I'm going to keep in touch with you know with with Josh Rudd's travel ball coach and and find out where that game got moved to and then when that game gets so moved, you can make sure you're not at that field because you certainly don't want to see Josh Rudd throw well clearly it's just the face <laughs> I'm looking at so I figured you know bad bad players good players you know I always tell, uh, I, I always encourage parents to go, this is going to be kind of weird to you, but to go to a field one morning at eight o'clock, pick a recruiting coordinator from a major school and just basically spy on them all day, follow them around all day from in, so that they can get an idea of what your day looks like and how much you're moving from field to field and driving an hour and a half that way just to come back two hours this way to go, you know, and see how active you guys are. Um, what does a day look like? Just one sunny day on the recruiting circuit. Well, and, and obviously it depends on the event, but, you know, obviously the, you know, one of the biggest ones is, are the, you know, the big WWBA events, you know, hosted in Atlanta where on most days the first game is, you know, starts at 8 a.m., and the last game, if for some reason you don't have a thunderstorm or everything stays on schedule, you know, starts at 9.45 p.m. Um, you know, so you're, you're talking about, you know, 14, 16-hour days, and, and that's the norm. You know, that's the norm during that time of year. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. But, you know, we – fortunately, we get – you know, we get some reprieve. Sometimes you get in that car for, you know, that 20-minute drive – um, you know, from one place to another with the AC going and a, and a bottle of Gatorade's like gold. How many teams could you potentially put eyes on in one day? Um, you know, typically speaking, you, you, want to, you want to go to a field for us to, to evaluate specific players. Um, there's always going to be those empty spots in your schedule where you're just going to see, well, hey, this is a good game between team A and team B. I know they got good players. They're from an area that we recruit, um, you know, let's pop in and see that. But the, the one thing that's hard, especially at a place like, like Lake Point Sports Complex or Terry Park or, or JetBlue or, or, you know, you know, fit team down in West Palm is you can get yourself in a position where by trying to see everything, you wind up seeing nothing. And, you know, you got four or five fields and, and your head can be you know, so what, what we try to do is, is to make sure that we know exactly what we're going to see um, and, and when we're going to see it. And, and then, you know, from that point, you just watch the game. You know, you, you walk up to that field and you know who your guy is. 
but then you're evaluating, you know, you're evaluating athleticism, you're evaluating physicality, you're evaluating body language and, and you're looking and, and, you know, a lot of times other players are going to stick out to you there. Um, but to answer your original question, you know, if there's seven games in a day and there's two of you on the road, obviously the mass says that's 14, you're probably going to see 20 or so because you may, you know, you'll be at a field where the guy you went to see pitches two innings and he's an absolute no brainer and all right, good. And then you may bounce over and, and try to catch a matchup with two other teams somewhere, you know, it just kind of depends. Yeah. Um, I've heard people say, you know, Oh, how great is that job? They just get to go around and watch baseball games all day. That's not <laughs> really that's not really a job, right? So I'm trying to pull some of that out, like you're mentioning. Aside from being away from family, you know, what what are some of the more difficult things about being on the road? Um, I mean, it's really for for us is in the summertime. It's you know, it's taxing and it's hot and it's tiring, but it's what we do. You know, all of us. Rarely will you, you know, will you hear, you know, recruiting guys that have been out there for a while, you know, complaining about, it. you know, it's just kind of what we do now. I mean, what now, about the diet plan over the, on, huh? on the road? What about the diet yeah, plan? It, that, that can go two ways, unfortunately. Um, it, it's either you never eat or you eat crap every, every chance you get, especially at midnight when the only thing's open is a, you know, fast food drive through somewhere. But, um, you know, it's it's the fall and the spring. I think there's more challenges because you have that in the back of your head that you know maybe you're away from your players, and you know your your players are are, you know, at practice and and you're on an airplane. You know, and and that doesn't happen very often. We try to make a point for for that not to happen. But I think from a from a challenge standpoint, that that certainly uh, can weigh on you more than than the hours and the days and stuff in the summertime because that that's your sole job. I mean, that's, that's what you do in the summer is you, you, you know, you get your butt on the road and you go find players. If you weren't a baseball coach, what, what career field would you be in? Oh man, I don't know. I mean, I, I think you could be running a charter fishing boat. I was going to say, I, I'd like to think I'd be doing something in the outdoor world where I'd be, be an outfitter somewhere, a charter captain, but I don't know. I think that's a, that's a tougher, that's a tougher go than summer recruiting. I mean, what kind of skills do you have for other career fields? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can, I can catch some fish from time to time and, and uh, you know, I, I enjoy hunting and are, are pretty successful at that at times. Uh, uh, cool. not, not much. I'm be a daddy. I'll be a full time daddy. Yeah, I saw the kid run past once or get carried past once. Congrats yeah. on the new child. Born, uh, just almost five months, man. So this is, you know, this this is a silver lining. You know, obviously, yeah. I would have rather, um, you know, had that home series last weekend against North Carolina. Um, but the silver lining is I get to spend all day with my little guy. So who would have won? The, who would have won that game? Uh, come on, that's a silly question. <laughs> baiting him all right coach thank you you're the man really appreciate it uh you doing this with me i'll talk to you later absolutely all right take care josh see you bud